Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another nail DIY tutorial. I'm showing you guys the little products that I'm using. Everything will be linked down below in the description box. I know you guys love these videos. I love doing them too. So let's get into this video. You know, I'm doing a really cute baby boomer French fade nail with poly gel, which is actually pretty hard to do. Um, this video took me a while to film, but this is the style that I'm going for. So if you guys are looking forward to this video, Video, then make sure you keep watching okay so I'm starting out with my nails already cleaned and prepped and like cuticles pushed back and all that stuff and I didn't show you guys because I always show you guys and I just wanted to cut some time out of this video so if you guys want to see me do that then you can watch one of my other videos because I literally do it I think in every single video but I'm just picking out my tips um, these tips I purchased off of Amazon they will be linked down below I'm just picking out the different sizes for each finger I measure them out and then I go in with my Beauty Secrets nail glue. I really love this nail glue. This is the one that I was raving about in one of my other videos and a bunch of you guys reached out to me and told me you bought it and you loved it too, which is actually great because it's a really great nail glue. Um, so just gluing my tips on. I'm doing a stiletto tip because I want like a really narrow, um, I, I think it's ballerina. I'm pretty sure it's ballerina. I, I always forget if it's ballerina or coffin, but like you'll see. I like a really slim nail. So I cut the tip off using this little acrylic um, nail clipper thingy <laughs> to cut off the edges. So now they're nice and straight. And I'm going with my dehydrator from the Gelish kit the one i literally talk about in every single video um if you haven't gotten your hands on this kit yet then girl i don't know what you're doing <laughs> it's honestly like saves you a bunch of money and just time because you have everything that just comes all together in one instead of trying to figure out okay which ones do i need which ones do i not need everything's in there for you and this is not sponsored by the way i literally just love it that much but i'm just buffing the tip and my natural nail a little bit um i'm not doing too much i'm more focusing on the tip but i'm also smoothing out that little ridge between where the nail is glued on the nail tip is glued on and my actual nail i'm just making sure to like smooth that out so that there's no little bump there i ended up washing my hands don't do that though before you put on the bonder your nail should be dry that's why you go in with a dehydrator i don't know why i wash my nails but i ended up going with more dehydrator and then primer i just didn't show you guys that but yeah because you don't want any moisture under your nails you don't want to trap moisture under your your nails so that like fungus can grow or anything or bacteria you don't want that so make sure your fingernails are completely dry and you use the dehydrator before you put your primer on then i'm going in with my foundation after i cured the primer for 60 seconds i'm going to go in with the foundation and do the same thing so i did dehydrator primer and now i'm going in with a base coat a foundation base coat and you have to cure the primer and the base coat. If you didn't know, now you know. If you don't know, now you know. Then I'm going in with my McCart nail extension gel. I wanted to test out and do one finger off camera before I came on and showed you, and it came out so good. I was like, wow, this looks fire, okay? Cause I wasn't really sure what technique I was gonna go with. So this is Bright White from the McCart Poly Gel. Um, I applied the white to the tip. This poly gel is really opaque in color. Like it's literally like a pure white. So I was kind of nervous cause I was like, how am I gonna get it to fade? Like I want that perfect like blend between the white and the pink and the pink poly gel, the natural pink is so sheer that I was afraid that you were gonna be able to see the white even though it was blended, I was afraid you were going to be able to see it through the pink because it's a sheer tone pink. But I was able to do it, as you guys can see, because I did the pinky. But like the method is just to apply it to the tip of the nail extension and kind of blend upwards. And I'm using the brush like flat with alcohol, but then I'm also kind of turning it to the side and blending it out that way. I feel like it's better if you just look at how I'm doing it because I really don't know how to explain it, but um, literally just, yeah, very light pressure. I'm not applying too much pressure and I want to keep the white towards the edge of the nail. So that was the first layer of white poly gel that I did. I cured for 60 seconds and then I went in with a second layer 
of white poly gel and I'm doing the same method so I'm just trying to build up thickness without making it too thick but I, because I don't want it to be super thick and then I you can tell where the white stops and where the pink starts you know like I want it to be a seamless blend so I'm really making sure that I'm keeping the thickness towards the end of the nail and all of the thickness for the apex will be built up with the pink poly gel later on and then also with the clear poly gel on top when I cap everything. But yeah, it looks good. I was I was basically like blending up until I was past my natural nail underneath because the tip is clear. So now after I cured, I'm going in with the pink poly gel, the natural pink, and I'm applying a pretty generously sized pink bead to the top of my nail and this is what's going to help like build up the apex and the thickness of my nail and like i said before it's really sheer so i can actually cover the white poly gel with the pink and it's not going to like cover it to where you can't see the pink like i can overlap it and you'll still see the white come through it actually makes the blend look a lot better so that was one that was two beads of pink poly gel and then i'm going in with the clear from rosalind and i'm capping everything because if you don't do this and you just go into file afterwards you're gonna file away your two colors that you blended together so you'll either see too much of the white or not enough of the pink so you have to cap it with clear poly gel you would do the same method if you were using acrylic or even builder gel so just following the same steps but obviously i'm using poly gel and this is where like the thickness of the nail comes in with the clear so i'm going to show you again from the beginning on a new nail so i'm going in with white and i'm applying that to the tip and i'm gonna like drag it up towards my nail bed towards my cuticle area but not like all the way like so like that And then I'm gonna cure it. Mm -hmm. And you see it, my nail is really thin. So I'm like, okay, gotta build up that thickness. So I'm going in with more of the white poly gel. This is the second layer. I mean, you could honestly do three if you'd like. Um, I was just satisfied with the thickness after two layers of the white and two layers of the pink and then a layer of clear. So in all, it's five layers. Um, just beating through this part but you see like I'm overlapping the pink onto the white so I get that blend and then whatever excess I have I'm just reapplying it to the top portion of the nail like so like that it looks good oh sis come on period going with my clear after I cured the nail is cured and then I go in with the clear because I don't want everything to still be wet and then it all mixes together so you want to cure in between your steps so that nothing is like being mixed or blended like too much together. This set took me so long to do and it's because it's literally the most intricate when it comes to how blended it needs to be like that's what's the most time consuming like this was more time consuming than when i did like the smile line like french poly gel like the french one with the the sculpted pink part and then the white on the end like this was more time consuming and it it seems a lot simpler because it's just like pink and white and they're just ombre but it's because poly gel is typically like you don't really see people um do an ombre with poly gel because it is like of a thicker texture and just consistency so it's harder to get it to blend together and to have that seamless blend but sis i was able to do it and i was so proud of myself like it took hella long but like i did it like i really did that well let's wait until the end you know going with my clear 
and I'm just capping it all so that I can you know happily buff and file on later on and it not be an issue with messing up my design it looks so good yes okay so this is all the nails done i only filed two nails so i filed my middle finger and my pinky just because i wanted to see what it looked like but i'm gonna go in and i'm gonna shape the rest of my nails i told y'all this is my favorite part this is legit my favorite part like this is when my nails come together like when i shape these up and i make them edges sharp and crisp and that that those corners just ah. Oh. This is literally like the most satisfying thing for me to do personally. Like this just really makes me feel good. <laughs> so I'm going in, you guys can see like my little method is to kind of do the sides first. Well, it's not my method, but the way that I approach this is that I file the sides first and then I tackle like the underside and then I buff the top. And then I go in with this um, like buffing sponge and I just do everything like all over again because this makes everything really smooth and it, it just makes the nails like give that finishing touch, you know? Going in with a little nail brush, brushing away the nail dust. And there you have it. Those are your nails before your clear coat. They look so good matte. I was like, oh, I'm always tempted to put like a matte top coat, but I literally can't resist like a shiny top coat. So I had to go in with my um shiny top coat because i literally can't like i can't not do it so this is the top it off from the gelish kit and i'm just doing one layer of clear top coat and i'm going to cure for 60 seconds under my uv lamp i want to do a video where i answer like all of your nail questions because i get so many questions underneath my nail videos and i try to write back to as many people as possible like trust me i'm literally trying to write back to everyone um but I want to do like a video where I answer your most asked nail questions, like your nail DIY questions. So I think I should like leave. I guess you guys can do that in the comments down below, right? And then I'll answer them in a future video. Does that sound like a good idea? Does that sound like something I should do? Actually, let me know if I should do that and then we'll decide like where you'll send the questions, you know? They look so freaking good. Oh my god, yes. Cuticle oil, my favorite part. Well, this is my second favorite part. Third favorite part. I don't even know. All of it's my favorite part, <laughs> period. <laughs> Going in with your cuticle oil, your hand moisturizer, and this is what your nails should look like. Oh my god, they look so good. Like, I did that, period. If you think that I did that, then make sure you give this video a thumbs up down below. Go ahead and click the subscribe button and join the fam. You can follow me on Instagram. Check out my nail fees highlights. That's my nail selfies highlight. I have all my nails that I post there. Um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down below. I love you guys so much. Don't forget, you are smart, you are beautiful, and people love you. I love you, and I can't wait to see you at my next upload. Bye.